Hello, this is Katie. Welcome back to my channel. Uh, so I wanted to go over just my few tips for super, super basic YouTube videos. And I'm really just talking about, you know, crafty YouTube videos and the type that I do. Um, for those of you that already have a channel and have videos, those of you that want to start a channel and make videos, uh, this will be helpful for. There are definitely crafters who go above and beyond. They have like opening title cards and they have music and they have, they edit their videos in certain spots and I just don't have time for that. Um, I'm not using this to make money. I don't monetize YouTube. And I, the only link I have is for uh, Doodlebugs Washington. Um, and if you use my link, it saves you money and I get points. That's about it. Um, so I'm here to help you. And so I wanted to go over a few tips and I'll be moving. This is my phone. Um, I'll be moving this and showing you a few things as well. So one of my first tips is having clear video. It's very visually painful. And I mean that in the nicest way to watch a blurry and shaky or blurry or shaky uh, video of crafty stuff or when someone is trying to show you something or something's blurry the whole time. You want to have a good, either a good camera with a setup. I have always used a phone I believe my very first video, if you go back into the depths, um, was a camera my brother had given me. So it was an actual camera, but I think I used it maybe once or twice. And it was like a Joanne's Hall or something. And, and he had also made me this thing that was stuck up in the ceiling. And he came over and like screwed it in for me. But and it, it, he made it with good intentions, but the rod would like wiggle and so the camera was like kind of doing this the whole time. And so I had to forego that. And then I had a Samsung Galaxy, I think in the beginning an S3, but at some point I got a Note 4. And about a year ago, I got a Note 9. Um, and my husband got the Note 9 first because he needed a new phone. And um, I decided, we're just on the same phone plan. I decided that I wanted the same phone because it had a lot of nice features and the camera was a lot better than the Note 4. Um, so I did get the new, um, the Note 9, uh, a lot of it for the camera for filming, uh, card videos and taking good pictures, better pictures, things like that. So having a good phone is good enough. Um, if you don't have a good phone, you can do your best with it or try and get a camera setup or investing in a phone overall is going to make your life a lot easier. Um, not just for filming videos. So the first thing is to have a good camera that can film clearly. There are certain times where my phone will lock itself on this thing where I can't tell it to like focus here and then I can't do this and also have it focus. And that's why sometimes you'll see my hand leave and I'll go to tap something because I have to turn off the autofocus lock. I'm not sure what it is I'm doing, but sometimes I have to do that. But my phone is just under my eye level. So I can see like this, it focuses when it should. Um, I can see what it is I'm showing you. So I'm not going to film a whole video blurry and not know it. Uh, having a phone and having it high enough above you so that you can work, but also so that you can still see what's going on, um, is going to help you a lot. And I think if you have, if you have a situation where you can have your phone filming and you can loop it to another device or like a tablet that's in front of you and you can see what it is you're filming, that might help. Um, I don't know how to work that. I know that a lot of people do that for like live lives, YouTube live, Instagram live, things like that. Facebook live. Um, so that is one thing that you can do. Um, so keeping, keeping your, your video clear and not shaking is good. Um, the second thing is this position, this overhead position of you can see what I'm doing, you know, and you're looking at me crafting or coloring. There are too many times where I've seen people filming 
from like over here and like a diagonal down onto what they're doing. And what you're viewing is like, if you're looking at the screen, it's almost like they're on the other side when I should be here, I should be coming from this side and you're watching me do the things I'm doing. So when they're filming, they're setting their phone across from them and like aiming it almost at an angle down at what they're doing. And, but they're backwards. It's kind of strange. So those videos kind of throw me off. And not only can I not really see what you're doing because it's at an angle, it's on the other side of the table, which is, I don't know, it makes me dizzy. Um, but that matters as well. So I recommend just an entirely overhead position. I'm going to stand up and show you how I do this. It is stupid simple. Um, I've had these drawer sets to the left and right of me since before I filmed this way. That's just where I had space for them. And then I realized I could put yardsticks across the top. So I'm going to pick you up slowly so I don't make you dizzy. I realized I could put yardsticks across the top. And I've added a couple stamp sets for height. Just matching Stampin' Up! boxes for height. And it's just literally Home Depot yardsticks. And then I come back up here and I put you on top and I try to center you so that the view is what I want you to see. So super, super simple layout. You also want to make sure it's high enough so you're not working with a foot of space or six inches of space and you're down here trying to color. You want to make sure you raise it so you can use equal height items like those stamp sets. You can create these stacks out of whatever. I just happen to have these drawers. So you do want to give yourself enough room and this gives you that overhead view. The second part of that is when I, before I put you down, before I hit record, I can see on my screen, you can't see this, but there's a little indicator. I think it's trees that show the trees upright versus vertical. So it tells you when you're horizontal and when you're vertical, you want to film horizontal. There are a lot of people that film vertical. YouTube just doesn't handle it very well. It may be clear, but it's going to take a whole black screen and put your vertical video in the middle. And so people can't really see much of what you're doing. Um, if you're filming maybe yourself up close, it might be okay. Um, but horizontal, something that fills up the whole YouTube video is going to be a lot better. So I just do not recommend filming vertically. Um, I'll be honest, there are a couple people I will watch the videos for because that's the only way they film, but they're usually filming themselves. But if you're doing a craft video or something and you have done it vertically, I just I can't physically watch it. It's painful. Um, so you want to be weary of that. I do have one video. It was like last Halloween. I had done, I think that all gray card where I used all the gray uh, markers and I accidentally filmed the whole thing vertical, but I had already done the whole card and I wasn't going to not upload it. And I think I was doing a video every day, so I had to upload it. <laughs> it was painful for me to do so. But, uh, that one I believe was accidentally vertical. So you want to avoid that. It just doesn't look very good. And YouTube just doesn't handle it well as a format. Um, the other thing is I'm trying to think one of one of the things is is have just your hands as a distraction i have um sometimes i'll have nail polish that's fine um uh i just i have these i don't have jangly jingly jewelry on i don't have a huge like apple watch to distract you with if there's something that you have have to medically wear go for it but um if you're crafting and you have something big or bulky that can be distracting then I would say just take it off um, any more than just, you know, your rings, unless it's jangly, um, can be distracting when someone is focusing, trying to focus on what it is you're trying to show them or color or whatever. Uh, so jingly bracelets and things like that you want to probably avoid while you're filming. Um, so the next part is about the editing. I didn't start doing any any editing to my videos until not that long ago maybe a year i'm not sure um but 
the most that I did was I downloaded Filmora Go. Filmora Go is the app. You can get a desktop application. You can also pay for it, but you can get the free version. Um, and the only thing that I have done in the free version, the first thing I did was I took away the sound and I added like music. I used music they had in the app or downloaded copyright free music to my phone and pulled in that. It was very easy. So I would do a coloring video. I would speed it up two times, take away the natural sound of me doing stuff at my desk, take that away and then add the music in and have that playing for the whole video. I also have done, um, what I've most recently done and more often is I take away the sound. I'll speed it up two times because sometimes it's just too long and uh, I, I don't, when I do a voiceover, I can't necessarily talk you through that slowly. Um, I would rather talk it two times of what I'm doing. So I'll take away the natural sound of me just crafting and background noise, take that all the way down, um, speed it up two times, and then you do a voiceover and you just play it in the app. And they do have a video about this. I'll link that down below, how to use, how I use the app when I'm doing a video like that. Um, where I speed it up two times and I do a voiceover and remove the natural sound that was happening while I was filming. Um, but you hit play and you just start speaking along. So you're watching your video at two times speed and you get to talk along with it until you're done. And you just want to be careful towards the end that you don't get cut off. I do that often more than I would like because um, I'm not paying attention to the timer and the fact that it's getting close to the end. So uh, also another tip as um, if you know you're going to be doing a voiceover or speeding it up, what I did, what I usually do at the end, sometimes I'll wave like this um, if I know I'm gonna be doing a voiceover and then I'll, I'll sit for a minute or I'll leave um, what I've done, like if I colored, like my mermaids, if I colored something, I would leave it there, you know, count to like 10 and then say bye. So I know that I have a little bit of extra time at the end when I'm doing my voiceover and I'm not going to run out of time. So you can catch up, say the last few things you want to say, and then end the video and not in a rush like I have sometimes. Um, so when you see my videos, they're very, very basic. I don't have like an opening illustration or fancy music or anything like that. It's just me. Hi, welcome back to my channel. Um, and if it is a voiceover, what you can do, and I've had a couple of opinions on this. People do say that uh, without the voiceovers, like this video here is not a voiceover. I'm showing you things and I'm talking through it. People have told me that they like that because they feel like they're crafting with you. So if they want to craft on their own while they're watching you, they feel like they're crafting with a friend or they're crafting along with you. Um, but the voiceover can sound a little cleaner. And you don't have to worry about unpredictable background noise or things like that. Um, so both are fine as long as there's not some crazy distracting noise in the background. So I was watching a video and it it's not really her fault. It was a great video and I wanted to see, you know, what she was doing. Um, but there were like garbage trucks car alarms some dog was barking I don't even think it was her dog it was like a neighbor's dog but she was like I live in New York City there's nothing I can do about it and so the sounds were just crazy and so I felt awful for her because I live in a relatively quiet area and if my neighbor's dogs aren't barking which in a few videos back they were when I was doing a voiceover so I let you know that that's what that was um if unless I'm really really interested in what you're showing me if your dogs are just nonstop barking and you're just continuing on with the video um, or there's a bunch of irritating sounds in the background, I can't. It just, it hurts my ears and I have to assume it hurts somebody else's ears out there. Um, so you want to, if you're going to do any crafting without a voiceover, you want to make sure it's during a time that's going to be quiet, not when you're right next to your, you know, washing machine and your dryer and your dishwasher is going off and car alarms and your dogs are going to bark um, or do the crafting. And like I do, I want to craft while like my husband is watching TV or we're both watching TV 
or we're talking to each other. I want to film it in craft so that I can do a voiceover later so I can just be comfortable while I'm crafting and not have to be like, hey, do you mind if I make a video? Because we have one bedroom condo. There's, you know, unless he's like sleeping in the other room like he is right now. It's not, it's kind of annoying to coordinate and I just don't want to be that person all the time. So I started doing voiceovers where I could just craft and worry about it later or do the whole video and then worry about voiceovering later when I felt like doing it and then uploading it, et cetera, et cetera. So, um, that's usually what I do. Those are things I recommend. Um, I think... I've covered the important things. Um, I would say if you have a fancy non-American accent, more the better. We love it. Um, British accents, English accents, are those the same thing? I don't know. Um, I love listening to foreign YouTubers. It's fantastic. Uh, so if you have a fancy accent, please share it with us and start a YouTube channel. Um, oh, another thing is uh, the, the lighting. I've worked a lot on making this brighter. Um, I will show you. I have a super old lamp from my parents. I'm going to come up here. Um, it's very yellow when I'm not showing you my workspace. Um, my lamp is very old, but I put daylight bulbs in it. So this lamp doesn't really affect what I'm showing you guys. It's these two here. So I got this one from Amazon. It's a day a daylight bulb or daytime light bulb. It's trying to mimic daylight, which is the best for, you know, photographing your cards and things like that. So I'm trying to mimic that indoors. And I have another lamp and it's just very, oops, uh, very bendy. And I can just kind of put it over what I'm doing. So you want to look for either lamps or if you already have a lamp, get a bulb that is a daytime bulb or a daylight bulb. Um, and that's going to be the kind of brightness you're looking for. And then you just want to bend it or move it so that it's just showing, you know, right over your workspace, what you're working on. And because I have these yardsticks up here, I try my best to not nudge it or knock it or go into these drawers over here too much. Cause I'm not trying to wiggle you and give you a headache. Um, Another thing which is a little bit harder for me is I have this here and this looks nice. I love teal. I know a lot of people that love teal, but it is a lot easier for me to work on this brown craft sheet that is taped down to my desk. It's just not the prettiest thing to look at. So sometimes I'll try and put this on here. It's just heavy. It's like a self-healing cutting mat. But I just liked it as a background just because it looked nice. So it's up to you if you want to try and find something that is a good background. But it also like moves. <laughs> so it's not that easy um, to use when I'm really trying to craft and show you something. So I am working on trying to think of a better solution than this ugly brown craft stuff that's under it. But um, yeah, that's another thing that you can look into and see what looks best to you. Um, let's see. So I think those are all the tips that I had or that I thought of and that I wrote down. Um, if you have any questions, let me know down below again, uh, down below, I'm going to link the, uh, other video I did showing you how I use Filmora Go. It's an app on my phone. I used another app, a screen recording app, to record my screen doing like a sample of running it through the app. So I did that. I was recording my phone screen in that video. So it looks kind of funny, but you can get the gist of what I'm doing in there. Um, so that can get you started if you're looking to film and speed up what you did in a voiceover. Um, also another thing when I'm filming, I do a lot of pausing. I don't want to have to pick sections because the Filmora Go app, you can do that. It's just kind of cumbersome. You have to pick sections of the video and add them into your project and then know, you know, this clip I want 2x. This clip I'm going to do 4x because I'm just coloring for like an hour. Um, this clip I want to do back to 2x and you have to separate it and I just don't 
have that kind of time for something I'm not being paid to do. And so um, I just speed up the whole thing to X. It generally works for what I do. So you can break it up in the app. Um, but what I show you in there again is just taking a whole clip, speeding it up two times, taking away the natural noise, and then you can do your voiceover and save it. And then you just upload it to YouTube. And I just use an app called Thumbnail Design. And you go in there and you can create a, or I think it's Thumbnail Maker. It's blue and white. That's the easiest one. And you go and you pick YouTube thumbnail and then you can just generate. And that's how I made like the video below this with like the mermaid coloring. I just Googled mermaid background, screenshotted it, borrowed that, and then put text over it in the app and made a YouTube thumbnail. And that way it makes it the size that it needs. And so it doesn't question your size when you bring in that image and you upload it. So um, there's that. And then also... If you're uploading on a computer, you can add tags to your video. So you want to type in the tags for things that people might look up. You can even do a, your own search on YouTube, like start typing lawn fawn and see what people search for a lot and then use those in your tags and people will find your video that way. Um, uh, so uploading to YouTube is pretty easy. They've changed it recently. Um, but I think now it's technically easier because there are very specific questions they have to ask you. Unless you fully understand the premiere situation, I would not check that box that says set as instant premiere. I don't know what that is, but it made it so that like I couldn't even go in and watch my video after it uploaded. I don't know how to do that, so I don't check that anymore. I did it once by accident. Um, but other than that, Again, this is just super simple, crafty YouTube video tips. Um, if you would like to start, and if you have any questions for me below, any questions for me, go ahead and put them below in the comments. Um, if you want to start a channel, or if you have any any other questions for me, let me know. And um, I'll put a link to the video, how I use the Filmora Go app below. And um, I think that's it. So thank you for watching and I will see you guys next time. Bye.